This is five on your side at six, focused on you. A day of reflection and remembrance. One year after two people were killed and several others hurt during a shooting at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School. There were no classes today at CBPA and the neighboring Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience so students and staff could focus on healing. Thanks for joining us, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. For many, it will take more than a year, if ever, to erase the memories of that day. A former student walked into the school and opened fire, killing sophomore Alexandria Bell and teacher Jean Kushka before police killed him. Seven other students were physically hurt. Everyone on campus that day is dealing with trauma. We have two reports tonight. Let's begin with Five on Your Side's Justina Coronel. She joins us live from CVPA after speaking to school leaders today. Justina. Mike and Ann, there was definitely a theme in our conversations today, and that was changes, all of the changes they've made within the last year and the momentum to keep moving forward. With every single move, CVPA students are in sync in this routine, art moving them. And I saw those young people moving and how their art was healing them. And now many are going through the motions, each one moving forward at their own pace. This is after last year, a school shooting destroyed their sense of security, taking away the lives of a teacher and student. Current board president Antoinette Tony Cousins witnessed the chaos. And instantly I said, where do you need me? Her leadership went beyond that day. Making sure if mental health was needed. Over the past year, there are new security measures in place. St. Louis Public Schools spent an extra $2.5 million for additional video surveillance, intrusion alarms, specialty doors and windows, along with more security officers paired with extra training. Fresh faces with the fresh perspective joined too. A new superintendent and new school principal. I became aware about St. Louis Public Schools, unfortunately, because of the shooting. They have a special place in my heart because that was the connection point for me. Superintendent Keisha Scarlett is ready to gear students in the right direction. Our children know different ways, you know, um, I think internally to be able to heal themselves and our job is to make sure they have the opportunities to be able to explore. They say no amount of practice prepares you for life's harshest lesson. What stands out more than anything, the resilience of the students, the staff. Yet leaders say these students and staff have worked hard to heal and will continue to keep moving through. What I know will happen is we won't stop. Um, we'll continue to rise. We'll continue to fight for the betterment of all, especially our children. Now, those leaders expressed their loves to St. Louis, saying the community has truly stepped up not only on that deadly day, but even a year out. Reporting in St. Louis, Justina Cornell, five on your side. While we remember the lives lost today, we also remember the lives that are forever changed. We're talking about the survivors, people that were in the building when that gunfire started. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay continues our team coverage. She talked to one former student who says he's no longer running away from his pain. Raekwon Strickland was a senior here at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School when the shooting happened. He's now a freshman in college, and like many, for him, the healing process is far from over. We got to know Strickland well in the days, weeks, and months following the tragedy. The senior stepped up for his class, organizing several events to help them all heal, including a march and unity show where they used their talents to tell their story. On the day of the shooting, Strickland says he still vividly remembers the gunshots screaming and his classmates jumping out of the windows to safety. He shared how it has taught him to appreciate life. It helped me to realize that you cannot take life for granted because so many people don't realize how life can truly flash before your eyes. It helps you appreciate people. It helps you appreciate the loved ones because you never know when your last is your last. I asked Strickland if there was one message from this day that he wanted to share with the community, what would it be? His message is to love on each other because you never know when your life can change in an instant. In South City, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. For more information perspective on the CVPA shooting and its aftermath, go to KSK.com. You can also download the Five on Your Side app. We have more survivor stories and an update on the police investigation, which remains open one year later. 
The city of Creve Corps has voted to move forward with a massive redevelopment plan. The project would turn the old Bear campus on Olive Boulevard into a mixed-use village with apartments, townhomes, restaurants, and more. Our Diamond Palmer is live in Creve Corps with new reaction from some frustrated residents about all this. Diamond. Well, good evening, Mike. The City Council here in Creve Core approved this development last night at the City Council meeting unanimously, and it has residents upset about it, saying that they were informed too late about this development and its progress, and they're now demanding more transparency from their city leaders as it moves into the next phase. The amendments passed eight to nothing. With that unanimous vote, Creve Corps City Council members approved the next phase of a mixed-use development district called Olea Village. It would transform the old Bayer campus into 96 acres of apartments, shops, office buildings, and hotels. During two hours of public comment Monday night, it was clear not everyone is happy. It's completely unacceptable to allow development to move forward without addressing the citizens' concerns, particularly those residents who live adjacent to the proposed development. Frank Scaduto wants changes, including a higher retaining wall, more green space, and smaller buildings. He and others who live along Spady Wood signed a petition against the current project plan. We needed to get at least 30 percent. We actually got 62 percent of the residents that are adjacent to the property, and that includes 100 percent of the, of the residents along Spady Woods that are within that 185 feet. Rachel Protzel says developers and city council members didn't visit her home and other adjacent homes until last week to inform them of project changes. She says only one of her council members for her district had a meeting with residents on October 8th, the day before a city council meeting. But other residents like Tate Skinner are in favor of the project. It's a really good golden opportunity for Creve Corps to develop a business district that is dense along the Olive Strip, which we're already seeing is becoming more and more busy. Now, the mayor of Creve Corps did return my phone call about 30 minutes ago, and he says the plans for this development were uploaded to the city's website in April. But he does say he wants to tell residents that they will do a better job of informing them of any changes for this development sooner in the in the process. Reporting live here in Creve Corps, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. A capacity crowd packed St. Louis City Hall to hear debate on the city's challenges with homeless shelters and tent encampments. A revised proposal would require the city to pick a place to locate a safe tent campsite for people in transition who cannot find shelter. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, is live downtown. Mark, you have brand new details. And good evening. Thorny problems created tense moments as aldermen tried to tackle those enduring issues like poverty and homelessness. And while they still can't seem to agree on a way forward, they did remove some controversial ideas that would have allowed public urination or defecation and instead started focusing on longer term issues, things that might ultimately save lives. 42 years ago, a homeless man froze to death on these very church steps in Soulard. And the neighborhood said enough, and so they decided to open up the shelter in the basement of the church. Now that shelter is at capacity. Winter is coming. Its director, Anthony D'Agostino, knows they will soon have more people knocking at the door than they can take in. Every winter we run into major frostbite and death. We know that we don't have shelter capacity. Older woman Alicia Sanye proposed an easier path to approve shelters throughout the city. The current petition process requires significant buy-in from neighbors nearby. And you need 51 percent, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot. St. Peter and Paul has money in the bank, and they're ready to expand. But before they can cut the ribbon on a new shelter, they have to cut through red tape at City Hall. It's too, I mean, there's too many red tapes. It's too much process. One by one, witnesses brought their frustrations about poverty and homelessness to the Board of Aldermen. We can do better. We're one of America's great cities, and we're in decline. Why is it easier and cheaper to find fentanyl and crack cocaine in this city than bread or a blanket? I've been homeless several times. Virginia Shelton slammed the mayor's recent decision to evict the tent encampment outside City Hall. It hurts my soul to see people being treated like that. That's just like somebody taking one of us and taking our whole house and everything we own and throwing it in the dumpster, say, get out of our hood, get out of our neighborhood. Despite the challenges, there were signs of hope and reminders of what's at stake when someone can find their way into shelter. I'm here with Fort Montes Clean and Sober, and, and rights 
Uh, the new version of this unhoused Bill of Rights would require the city to give those tent camp sites a 30 day eviction notice with hopes it would funnel those people into more permanent shelter in the interim. It would also require police officers to have a 24 7 uh, presence, whether that's with an officer or surveillance at each of these sites. Uh, it's still no sign that this plan has anywhere near the amount of support it needs to pass. Live downtown, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. Coming up, a case of road rage escalated into violent attacks. What police say set off a downtown red light runner. Plus, he's finally welcomed home 80 years too late. How one soldier's family is honoring the man they never had the chance to meet. The unusually warm weather continues for a few more days, but the rain chances are going up. Temperatures, though, are going the other direction by next week.